So you can start now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope you all are doing well today and staying safe, of course. So today in this session, we will be interviewing an expert and a peer mentor from COVID under 19 about the topic child participation in budgeting and the decision making process. So of course, before initiating the interview, I would like the expert to introduce themselves followed by the peer mentor. Thank you. Um, my name is Shamila Kassim. I've been working in the field of children's rights for probably about 30 years. I am based in Cape Town, South Africa, but I work globally. Um, my area of interest is particularly children's participation and their fulfillment and realizing their rights. Um, more especially, I look at how budgeting, that is public budgeting, affects children's rights. And so I'm also interested in working with children so that they can participate in um, government making the budgets that ultimately affect service delivery and children's lives. And so I work with children um, and prepare them to participate in their local government budgets and to affect the local government's um, budget and particularly the services that they should benefit from in order to protect and fulfill their rights. Hello everyone, Namaskar. I'm Amrit Rizal, a child health activist from Nepal, and I'm involved in COVID-19 initiative as a peer mentor. Thank you. Okay, it's great to meet you both. So let us start with the first question, and this will be for Amrit. So Amrit, as a child rights activist, what challenges do you see regarding child participation in budgeting? Child participation is one of the core principles of UNCRC. General comment on public budgeting by UN Committee on the Rights of Child clearly states the involvement of child participatory budgeting process. And yeah, uh, but the policies made there at the United Nations lack its implementation here in the local authority. Uh, we, the child rights activists, are actively working for this, but it's not as simple as we think. So, yeah, we, uh, of course, we can say that there's a lot of challenges uh, need to be faced uh, during child participation budgeting. Although we strongly believe that we need to have this, we should have this say in key decision making that affects our life, we are often denied with the opportunity. Similarly, politicians are one of the key stakeholders in public budgeting, but we children feel that uh, we are politically disengaged and I feel that politicians even do not consider our interest in public budgeting. Um, so, a habit of child-friendly intergenerational consolation is must and this is what we should be looking forward in the coming days. Is. Moreover to this, complex procedure, adult indifference, and uh, practical barriers are something creating a lot of challenges regarding child participation and budgeting. Uh, here in Nepal, we have an approach of Bal Vela, which is also known as child conference uh, to address the issues regarding child participation and budgeting and yeah, to promote child participation and budgeting. So yeah, there are a lot of challenges uh, need to be tackled, but uh, there are some solutions uh, and the main solution can be like the policies there at the UN should be very much uh, in implementation here in the local authority. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Amrit. So now uh, for my next question, this is for Shamila. So what is the benefit of child participation in budgeting and the decision-making process specifically for the children for the decision maker, for the process itself, and in general for the society. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I believe that children are agents of change. Um, children are the future and they are the present. Um, they have the ability and the capabilities to influence how services are delivered uh, for children's rights and ultimately affect their daily lives um, in education, in health, in social development, and similar. The idea that we as adults must prepare children for the future only is short-sighted. Uh, we have seen that children are interested in influencing what government does for them 
and their communities. We've just heard from Amrit, a great example from Nepal. And I would say that there are three benefits, um, three distinct benefits. First, um, through children's participation, um, and they're participating in discussions about budgets and other policies, like policies on education, like policies on health, for example, vaccinations for children. Um, children can change the communities they live in for the better. For example, by participating in discussions about toilets at the schools in their communities, um, they can influence how much money is given to those schools, um, how those toilets are um, built, how they are maintained and how they are serviced. Um, children can also influence the amount of money that is needed for those services. Um, mainly um, once, the, once it is built, there needs to be money, but there also needs to be money for maintaining and servicing um, those toilets. Second, I believe that children can change budget systems. For example, um, they can change how budgeting is done at the local government level. So ensuring that children are included when the government or local government specifically plans their budget. Um, and then through allying with the right organizations in civil society, I believe that children can ultimately influence um, the amounts that go to key services that affect um, children's rights and their lives ultimately. Um, and thirdly, I believe that a children's participation elevates the voices of children um, and they can therefore change how service delivery happens at the, at the end. Um, and so it's not just about um, affecting children's rights, but it also, it is about children's voices, elevating those voices and supporting children so that they are agents of change in their own communities. Okay, thank you, Shamila. There does seem to be quite some great benefits to this. So now uh, my next question is for Amrit. So Amrit, how was the COVID under 19 project impactful in the sector of child participation and more specifically in your own workspace during the COVID pandemic? Thank you for the question, such a wonderful question. Yeah, COVID under 19 is a child-friendly platform that initiates to meaningfully involve children in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in 2020, more than 26,000 children aged 8 uh, to 17 from 137 countries participated in the COVID-19 survey uh, to discuss about the uh, life under COVID pandemic, uh, including the children from minority groups, underprivileged groups, asylums, migraines, um, refugees, children including disabilities, and yeah, identifying as, uh, themselves as LGBTQI plus community. So yeah, COVID-19 is uh, itself creating a great uh, uh, participation for not just the children who have the access, but for the children who are not in an accessible level. Along with this, uh, to say specifically about me, what have I learned and how does my workspace uh, gets benefited by COVID-19, I'm able to learn about different child participatory process that is relevant throughout the world. And I can implement that in my day-to-day -day life of activism. So that is one of the great achievements for me. Along with this, the both simultaneous learning and teaching process that I learned from COVID-19 is what I cherish the most. And I feel yeah, COVID-19 is one of the outstanding and amazing platform that is working greatly to ensure meaningful child participation. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, Amrit. Now uh, to the last and final question, this is for Shamila. Now, if budgeting and decision-making would be done through intergenerational consultation, what change would it bring in a small city and what change at the UN? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would say that in a small city, children's voices will be heard. 
Um, I think also that budget and service delivery systems would change and budget policies would change to ultimately fulfill children's rights. Um, when we are monitoring budgets or tacking budgets, however you want to call it, changes take some time. Um, and so we need to be patient. But small child uh, changes are beneficial. So for example, coming back to the toilets, um, we could start with the toilet example that I used earlier. We could start, for example, with um, thinking about maybe if there are no toilets that we start off by asking for at least a proportion of the toilets that we want to ultimately have built. And then build up over time um, to the no number of toilets that we want per school if there are no toilets. I would also add that by including children in budget planning, decisions and implementation, children are part of an active, vibrant civil society advocating for progressively realizing children's rights um, and broadly human rights. Um, children are included, um, just coming back to the benefits, in a network of, or, um, of organizations, sorry, advocating for better budgets, uh, for children and human rights. Policy makers and governments are more aware of children's participation um, and their rights, and children are respected when government gets together um, in their planning. Um, there's also space when they do this planning that children are listened to and heard. Um, and then also, as mentioned by Amrit, coming back to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, General Comment Number 19, that is public budgeting for realizing um, the rights of children. Uh, it gives action to Article Number 4 in the CRC. Um, and this general comment sets up very clear guidelines on what government should do, as Amrit mentioned earlier as well, particularly on children, children's participation. Um, Children were instrumental in shaping these guidelines and this general comment and participated worldwide to influence the content. So I think um, this has happened. So it would be natural to include children in monitoring what happens as regards that general, general comment and to prepare children to be able to be included um, when governments submit the report on the progress on the CRC. Um, I would also say that including as regarding how government realizes or sorry allocates I would say revenue to realize the rights of the child um, we should help children to better understand how governments are planned um, government budgets are planned are executed and how they are monitored at parliament level and when the auditor does the audit of the government's budgets um, I would say that very firmly that we should, that a civil society should be sure about how the government interacts with the UN when they are reporting on the um, on their progress on the CRC, and that we should demand um, that children has a seat at the table when this report is developed and when this report is um, um, when this report is delivered to the CRC, so that no child is left behind in any kind of reporting on children's participation um, in government budgeting. Thank you. Yes, I completely agree on what you mentioned and this completely shows how much of an important topic this is. So um, thank you so much for giving great and well informative answers this session. And also, thank you so much for taking time from your day to join this wonderful discussion that we just had. Um, it was a great delight to have you both here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me and thanks for the facilitation. Of course. Thank you for having us. Like uh, such a wonderful discussion. Thank you.